Hi, my name is Paris Wolf, and I'll be your instructor today teaching you about cryptography. Today, we're going to take a look at this practice test and talk about why the answer is the answer and what the other options would match up with. Question number one. A certificate authority wants to sign a certificate and issue it to Wolf Industries, a business. Which key will they use to sign the certificate? So anytime a certificate is signed, it's always signed with the private key. And since the certificate authority is signing this certificate, it's going to be the private key of the certificate authority. If the Wolf Industries was signing this certificate, then it would be signed with Wolf Industries private key. So I want to talk a little bit about how this process works. So when a signer digitally signs a document, let's say there's an email, a cryptographic hash is generated for this document. Now, that hash is then encrypted with the, um, with the sender's private key, and then they're also going to provide their public key with that document so you can verify they are the person that they say they are. But the process of a certificate is not encrypting the rest of the message. It's only encrypting that hash value, and so you can verify that the person is who they are, that are that they say they are that's sending it. So question number two, when the certificate authority wants to prove their identity, which key would they provide to prove their identity? They would provide their public key. So they'd sign the certificate with their private key, and then they would provide their public key. If Wolf Industry was giving this out to customers, they would sign their certificate with their private key and then use their public key to prove their identity. Question three, what should an administrator use to sign and encrypt messages for the public key infrastructure? So PKCS, that stands for Public Key Cryptography Standard. And number five is used for password-based encryption. Number seven is used to sign and encrypt messages for public key infrastructure. So that's the answer. Number 10, a standard format used for requesting digital certificates from certificate authorities. Number 12. Number 12 is used to bundle a private key with its X.509 certificate or to bundle all the members of a chain of trust. So when they use a certificate, it's for server authentication, client authentication, code signing, email signing, time stamping. And here's some common types of certificates that they have. Question number four. Which field shows who created the certificate in X.509 certificate? The subject has a little bit about the subject of the certificate. The issuer shows who created the certificate. The version, such as the version number, and the thumbprint, which is a unique value and hash of the certificate. And so when you think of a thumbprint, I want you something that is unique to you. And that's why they call it a thumbprint, because a hash value is a unique value. Here's some of the contents that they would have on a certificate. The public key, the issuer, serial date, always has a start and end date, subject, thumbprint algorithm. Question number five. Which certificate management process involves certificate creation and certificate key distribution? So we're going to take a look at all the options on here. So initialization includes registration, key pair generation, Certificate recreation, certificate and key distribution, which is the answer, certificate dissemination, and key backup. So issued is certificate retrieval, certificate validation, key recovery, and updating. Cancellation, that would be used for a certificate expiration, certificate revocation, perhaps there's some sort of compromise where they wouldn't want to cancel those keys so they no longer work key history and key archiving. A hold, well, you would utilize a hold when there's a possible security incident, but you're not sure. And so you want to temporarily disable those keys. And if it's a false positive and everything is good, then you can go ahead and reactivate those keys. If there was something malicious, then you can go ahead and cancel those keys so they no longer work. And so if you've ever been to a website and it says, do you trust this source like the certificate is no longer valid. Well, there could be an, a number of reasons why, perhaps that their certificate expired or maybe those keys were revoked from that website. 
Question number six. What is the first step for obtaining a signed digital certificate signed by a trusted certificate authority? So the first thing you would do is you would generate a key pair and then you would provide the public key to the certificate authority. Or another example is that if you are setting up your Amazon cloud, you're gonna create your public and private key. You're gonna store that private key on your computer and then provide the Amazon cloud the public key. And now if you lost that private key, you would, you would not be able to retrieve it because Amazon wouldn't hold on to your private key. Then the next thing, regarding this question, like the certificate authority generates the digital certificate for their requester. So, and then they would sign the digital certificate with the certificate authority's private key and issue that to the requester. And this would be the first thing that the certificate authority does is they're gonna sign that uh, certificate with their private key. This would be the first thing for their requester that they would use. Question number seven, which algorithm would you use to encrypt an email? We have MD5, SHA-1, S-MIME, or AES. So anytime that you see MD5 or MD and HA, I want you to think hashing algorithm. So HA stands for hashing algorithm, and the MD stands for message digest, which is the earlier form of a hashing algorithm. S-MIME is the correct answer, and S-MIME is used for uh, sending digitally signed and encrypted emails or messages. And AES is a encryption type, but specifically the best one here would be S-MIME. Question number eight. Which way can encryption keys be distributed securely? So the best way here would be from Diffie-Hellman. Diffie-Hellman uses asymmetric formula to go ahead and get the symmetric encryption set up. So Diffie-Hellman is used to distribute keys. So initially when you're logging on through an online website, uh, the first time you're going to, it's going to be the asymmetric encryption. And what it tries to do is then establish the symmetric encryption typically, which is better for bulk transfer of data. And then the other option on here is MD which stands for message digest, which is for hashing. And hashing is not encryption. Hashing is for integrity. And RTF, that stands for rich text format, which is not covered. Question number nine. What is the role of symmetric encryption in encryption and decryption? So for symmetric encryption, both the keys are exactly the same. So the secret key is is the same one used for encryption and it's the same key used for decryption. Let's take a look at why this is definitely not the right answer. A public key is used for both encryption and decryption. Well, you would never wanna use a public key because public means everybody has it. And so you're not gonna use that. That's not a valid answer at all. On the third option here, we have a public key is used for encryption and a private key for decryption. So what this is referring to is asymmetric encryption. And so if I wanna send you an email, I'm gonna go ahead and encrypt that with your public key, and then you're gonna decrypt it with your private key. The public key infrastructure holds all the public keys. So if you're in a company, it's gonna hold all the public keys of all the users uh, in that organization. And whenever you wanna send someone else an email, your system is gonna retrieve their public key, and then only that other user that you're sending it to, they're gonna decrypt it with their private key. And then when we're looking at signatures, you would sign that email. If you want to digitally sign that email, you would digitally sign it with your private key and provide them your public key. But for the encryption of the document, you're going to encrypt it with their public key, and then they're going to decrypt it with their private key. And the last option on here, determine whether two files are identical or not without knowing anything about their contents. That is referring to hashing. Question number 10, what is the purpose of a digital cert certificate? To validate the integrity and authenticity? No, to bind a public key to an individual device or service. So the answer is to bind a public key to an individual device or service. While on the digital certificate, the signature would validate the integrity and authenticity. 
So you can verify that the person is who they say they are that sent it to you. And the other options, they don't work here.